Howdy folks, Dave here at Thunder Mesa Studio where I'm still hard at work on our HO scale project layout, the Santa Fe and St. Nick, getting it done in time for Christmas this year. Uh, last episode we uh, finished up the depot scene and as you can see now I'm starting to place some of the structures for the town of St. Nicholas itself. But that's not really what I want to talk about today. I want to save the little town square scene and the Christmas tree and all that uh, for the final episode. Today I want to work over here on the back side where there's still a little scene that needs some attention. Back here we have a section of track and scenery which is still unfinished. I need to add some more snow. I need to build a bridge to go over this little frozen pond that I want to put in. And we'll add some wildlife, some more trees, and a few other details just to finish up this winter scene. For the bridge in our scene, once again, I'm going to be turning to a very widely available plastic kit. In fact, it's none other than the very well-known Atlas Warren Truss Bridge. And this bridge kit is almost a rite of passage for model railroaders. <laughs> it's been built by so many of us. Uh, it's very easy to build. Often it's the first kit that a, uh, a new hobbyist will put together. So we're going to dive into this now. It's going to be a little bit of a nostalgia for me and hopefully uh, interesting and fun for you. I'm going to put a little bit of a twist on this build. I, I'm going to build it, you know, pretty much as the instructions indicate, but we're going to add a little bit more to it to make it fit in with the uh, Cato Unitrack that I'm using on uh, all the rest of the layout. Just get everything out of the bag. It's a really basic kit to put together. Not that many pieces, as you can see. Oh, it even comes with rail joiners. Look at that. <laughs> this is actually one of those uh, Atlas kits that snaps together without glue. You don't really need glue to put it together. Um, it's very well engineered. It's probably one of the reasons that this kit has been around forever and lasted so long. But I'm going to glue mine together anyway. This is going to be a permanent installation. And the first thing to add are these little gussets to run the length of the bridge deck. And they just slide back into these little slots here like that. Once again, I'm using some uh, Ducco plastic model cement for this. Now the gussets that we just added are now going to snap into slots in the side trusses. Just got to line all those up and push them in. There we go. And the other side. There we go. One Warren truss bridge. Now I'll get some paint on this. I'm going to use some uh, Rust-Oleum Dark Brown Camo, one of my favorite colors for simulating rusty old iron. Now with the paint about dry on the bridge, I'm going to place it right on top of the Cato Unitrack roadbed. And that way I can mark with a pencil right where I need to cut because I'm going to cut through the roadbed and I'm going to just basically drop the bridge right into the middle of this piece of Cato Unitrack and then you'll have all one piece to fit right here Unitrack with the Atlas Bridge right in the middle of it. Now I never glued this section of track down so I should be able to disconnect it without too much difficulty. My plan here is to replace the rail completely on both the Cato Unitrack and on the Atlas Bridge with one continuous piece which is the proper length for both of these pieces together. So all I really need uh, from these pieces of Unitrack is the roadbed because I'm going to slide new rail in once this is cut to size. I think 
careful not to break the spikes. Yeah, it's uh, it, I think it is code 80. So hopefully these larger spikes will keep it engaged. The Atlas Bridge comes with uh, code 100 rail, which is you know, pretty big for HO scale, but was the standard for many, many, many years. Code 83, code 70 is closer to the standard now. Guiding this in through the spikes. Now it's moving. Okay, good. Making sure I'm not missing any of these. I want to bring it right up into the rail joiner. Well, these are some Zuron flush cutting rail nippers. Work really well for this. Now I want to strengthen this underneath. I cut a couple of pieces of clear acrylic to act as gussets. I'm just going to glue the heck out of those. Put them right on there. And that should brace that pretty nicely, I think. Now I'm going to do a little dry brushing on here, mixing some light gray with some rusty red, just to go over all of these uh, rivet heads, and bring out that detail in the bridge. All right, that's probably good. Now it'll look like the bridge has been there a little while. Let's go see how it fits. Fits nicely. Ha! Like a glove. I love it when a plan comes together. Now I want to make some abutments for our bridge. And I've got some of these Hydrocal wall castings. These were sent to me by a friend. I'm sorry, I don't know the manufacturer of these. But it um, might be Woodland Scenics. They make some uh, retaining walls like this. You can also find similar resin castings. There's no shortage of bridge abutments out there is what I'm saying. You'll be, you'll, you'll be able to find some. Maybe not exactly like this, but they're out there. And now I face the challenge of uh, cutting this to size. I need it to be three quarters of an inch high. And cutting through any kind of plaster casting and not having it shatter is... Uh, a bit of a challenge. You just got to take your time. Go slow. Don't get impatient. Now that'll work. Get it up to about where you need it and then sand off the rest. I like to start with a little dark brown like burnt umber. Just uh, paint the whole thing. Get it back into all of the cracks and crevices. Then when that's dry, I want to go back and dry brush over the top of it with some lighter tans. Maybe some red rock reds in there. Just hitting the tops of the stones. And then I want to go back and hit it again with the uh, a little bit of the scenic base color that I used for all of the rock work, and that way it'll look like it's made out of local stone, which of course it would be. And I'll put a little bit of Eileen's tacky glue on the back and the bottom of each one of these, and then just slide it in underneath the end of the bridge. Just like that. All right, and then I'll use the next batch of snow that I make to backfill in behind these so there won't be any gap there. I'm going to use some clear acrylic for the surface of my frozen pond 
also, and this stuff is good, sh good uh, thickness. It's just thick enough to hold its shape, you know, stay flat, but thin enough that I can cut it with a pair of scissors. By the way, don't use your good scissors for this. <laughs> this is a job for the crappy scissors. Just take some flat white just spray around the perimeter, leaving most of it clear and open. This is on the bottom side, by the way. Now I want to darken this surface down here where the pond is going to be, so it'll look deeper than it actually is when you look through the frozen water. So I'm painting this uh, with a mixture, about a 50-50 mixture of burnt umber and flat black. Probably would have been easier to do this before I put the bridge in, but eh, I'll we'll make it work. Yeah, I think that'll do it. Now with everything dry, I can place the surface of our pond right in here. And I don't need to glue that down because the next batch of snow that I'm going to make up is going to hold that in place and blend everything together. And here's a quick refresher on our snow formula from the snowy scenery episode. And, uh, some baking soda, enough Mod Podge to get it all wet, and some white acrylic paint. Some of you may be asking, why the white paint? It's already white. Well, yes, it's white now, <laughs> but uh, baking soda can yellow over time. So adding the white acrylic paint uh, helps to mitigate that. Make sure to stir it thoroughly. It looks pretty good. That's about the consistency I like it for applying it to the layout. And I'm going to start just by applying it around all of the edges of the pond. You can just kind of tease it up to the edge, see, like I'm doing here. Again, one of the best tools for applying this is a palette knife, kind of like this one. I'm trying not to get snow on the bridge at this point, but, you know, if I do, it's no big deal because it's going to have snow on it too. And once I've got it all around the pond, Take a, just a damp paintbrush, and I can manipulate it, move it around where I want it to be. A little bit more control than just uh, slopping it on, you know. And then you can just take your brush and dab it down in there and texture the snow so you get rid of those brush marks. I also want to bring it up the side of the embankment for the roadbed. Blend that in, just like I did with the rest of the track. And just continue this on down all the way to the tunnel opening. When this stuff dries, it's, you know, hard as plaster. So it does a great job of not only simulating snow, but uh, holding the track and the pond and everything else in place. All right, now I'll let all this set up and harden for a little while. And while I wait, I can do a little bit of finish work on this uh, tunnel portal. Just going to dry brush on some lighter tans, and grays, bring out some of the detail. Well, that's not too bad. So now, I'll take some of this leftover snow mixture, just press it in on these uh, timbers here on the tops. It looks like some snow has gathered up there. And we we'll just blend that in with some more of the snow mixture. Now that this is set up, 
a little bit. Kind of want to sculpt this into a frozen waterfall. Around a water hole like this in the desert, there would likely be some deciduous trees, cottonwoods and willows and maybe a sycamore or two, something like that. Fortunately, since it's winter time, that makes our job really easy. They wouldn't have any leaves on them. So I just need to take these Woodland Scenics armatures and twist and bend them into some more realistic shapes. And we can paint them with some dark brown camo just to get rid of the plastic shine. And then a light overspray of some uh, tan camo, especially towards the ends of the branches. Then when that enamel's dry, take some thick white acrylic paint and hit the tops of the branches where snow would gather. Just kind of dab it on. Pay a lot of attention to these little, uh, these little crooks, these places where two branches meet. That's where a lot of snow would gather. And that is kind of the look we're going for right there. I really prefer the uh, thicker artist's tube acrylics for something like this. Um, a thinner uh, craft paint like this isn't going to cover quite as well. And what you want is, you know, big globs of white paint that, that are going to look like snow. And now I can start planting these all around the pond. First poke a little hole with a bamboo skewer, a little dab of glue on the pointy end, and down into the scene. Now to finish off the surface of the pond, I'm applying some diluted white glue around the edge and then just sprinkling on some of this Woodland Scenics Soft Flake Snow. And that's going to ease that transition. It's okay if a little bit of glue gets out there on your pond. Just put some snow on top of it. Oh, I like that. It looks good. Now I'll take some more of that white acrylic paint and dry brush the track. So it matches the snowy scenery on either side. And get on the bridge here too. And take it all the way back to the tunnel portal. Now this stuff is Woodland Scenics Flex Paste. And I'm going to use it to add the look of snow to the bridge, particularly on these uh, trusses. It's a nice thick paste. It's real similar to the baking soda mixture we made actually. You could use it for that purpose. You could use it to make the snow on your entire layout like this, but it would get expensive. So I prefer to use it for small applications like this. You just kind of want to dab it on rather than trying to brush it on. I'll add some down here on these horizontal bridge members. Stuff is really easy to apply. It's just just like very thick paint. Now while that's still wet, and it's going to be wet for a while, we've got a pretty long working time with this. I'm going to sprinkle on some more of this uh, soft flake snow and put some all along the deck of the bridge as well. And take a dry soft brush kind of sweep it off so it's just down uh, between the cast-in ties and not up there where it's going to interfere with the trains at all. Mist it with a little water and apply some white glue. Diluted white glue. 
This is white glue that's diluted about three to one. Let's put a little snow to soak up that excess. Now I've got some dark evergreen foliage clumps. With low growing shrubs using a little bit of Eileen's tacky glue. And then I sprinkle snow on top of all of those. And wet them all down with a fine spray. Once again, dribble on some diluted white glue. Since this is sort of the wild side of the layout, I thought we should have some wildlife over here. Got just the thing. A set of deer from Woodland Scenics. Let's start with the stag. We've got a doe and a little baby fawn. And then we've got this guy that's like leaping through the air. And no one ever knows what to do with him. And uh, I don't either because it just looks really unrealistic. So he's going back in the box. Sorry, Blitzen. And over on this side, we've got the old prospector and his burrow. Maybe they think there's some placer gold in that pond. Unlikely. And for the final detail, I'm brushing on some Woodland Scenics water effects on the face of this so that when it dries, it'll look like a frozen waterfall. Well, after letting this dry for a good long while, I just need to clean off the track, get the paint off the rails, and I think uh, this little winter scene will be done. That's going to do it for this little winter scene. I want to thank you so much for watching today. I hope you enjoyed it. And you know, if it's your first time here, I hope you will subscribe and hit that notification bell so you'll see the next video coming from Thunder Mesa Studio where we finish up the little Christmas village of St. Nicholas and light up the Christmas tree. Hope to see you then for that. You can also follow us over on Instagram at thunder.mesa and see what's new on the Thunder Mesa Studio website at thundermesa.studio. And if you really enjoy what we're doing here at the channel and would like to show your support, you can do what these great folks did and head on over to patreon.com slash thundermesa and show your support there. Until next time, keep moving forward, my friends. Happy holidays. Adios for now.